Hi, welcome to Amiga Alive. This is part 4. Today we're gonna do a little repair to this Amiga 500 floppy drive. It won't write to any floppy disk, claiming the disk is write protected regardless of the disk's write protection setting. We find out why and fix it. As always, if you want to try this yourself, it's probably best to watch the video to the end before doing so, so you know what to expect. We're gonna be using a standard set of tools and material, nothing special. Soldering iron, a small screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, pliers, a little bit of wire. By the way, a couple of different colors will help checking our connections and if used properly, the result will look a bit more professional. A multimeter to check stuff, a small cutter and we'll be using hot glue. Yeah, everyone's favorite, but in this case it works really well, I think. We'll see in a couple of minutes. Okay, back to our floppy drive. Taking a closer look at it, it's obvious there's something wrong here. It has a broken switch. A little bit of explanation. This switch, in fact, contains two individual switches, a front and a rear one each one closed by pushing down a corresponding vertical pin. The rear switch is responsible for detecting if a floppy disk medium is present at all. It gets pushed down by the floppy disk's plastic body when it's inserted into the drive. The front switch, the one missing here, is responsible for detecting if a floppy disk is right protected or not. When a disk is inserted into the drive, its right protection hole aligns with that pin and, if the hole is closed, pushes down the pin, telling the drive that it can write to the disk. We'll see in detail as we move along. Mm -hmm. So the reason this drive treats any floppy disk as write protected is pretty obvious just from visual inspection. Let's see what we can do about it. First of all, we have to find a replacement for our broken switch. I tried to find one from various dealers, but none had any. So I started looking at PC floppy drives I had lying around. This one's a Mitsumi D359T6 drive, and the switches it had looked quite promising. There's really no guarantee you'll find that specific type of switch inside all of these. Floppy drive manufacturers often make slight changes to the components used for one type of drive. So we just look at some cheap, maybe broken, PC floppy drives we can find and yeah, this switch looks quite similar to the one used in our Amiga's drive. In fact, none of these switches will be vastly different. After all, they are all serving pretty much the same purpose. After removing the drive's casing, the switch looks even better. This is the bottom side. Mm -hmm. The way it is mounted is obviously different, but we'll find a way to put it into the Amiga's drive. Let's take a look at these two floppy disks. The blue one is a double density or DD disk, standard for most Amiga floppy drives. It has one rectangular hole near the left side of the drive slot. This is the right protection hole present on all 3.5 inch floppy disks. On the back side of this hole, there's a small movable plastic part that allows covering it. It's the disk's right protection switch. You've probably been using this before. The black floppy disk is a high density or HD one. It has an additional rectangular hole near the right side of the drive slot. This hole will release a second switch present only in HD floppy drives, telling the drive that an HD floppy disk medium is present. Most PC floppy drives are HD drives, as is this Mitsumi drive. 
so we pick the HD switch for removal, leaving the drive in a usable state. It just won't recognize DD floppy disks anymore and treat every floppy as an HD one. The process of finding a switch and removing it from the drive will of course differ depending on what donor drive you can find, so we won't go into more detail about that. Now it's time to work on our Amiga floppy drive. It's a JU253-031P, as used in many Amiga 500s. We remove two screws at the back of the drive and lift the top casing at the front using a screwdriver or maybe a pocket knife or similar. To get even better access to the location of our switch, we have to remove the black plastic part which still covers most of the drive. It more or less just slips out towards the front of the drive and up, but you may have to use a screwdriver as a lever to lift the front metal guides out of their slots. A little bit of force may be required, but it shouldn't be hard. Is there a better way of doing this? Please let me know. Careful, don't just lift the black plastic part up directly, it carries the drive's upper head read mechanism. We now have full access to our broken switch. We take a good look from all sides, maybe we even do some measuring if we have proper tools, to see if the new switch will fit where it should. And yeah, this looks pretty good, maybe a bit tight, but this is worth a try. The location of the switch's soldering pads is of course different from the original ones. But that's not a problem, the original switch required wires anyway. We've bent up the soldering pads of the new switch, which will save some room and probably make soldering a bit easier. Ok, with newly gained confidence, let's remove the old switch. And put the new one in place. This turns out to fit near perfect. There's a small ridge on the floppy drive's metal frame, which clamps the switch in place. And as you can see, I've reinserted the old switch's screw the other way round, adding another point of contact. And here comes the hot glue. You have been warned. We apply some hot glue to the sides of the switch, leaving the soldering pads and switching pins untouched. We have some room for the hot glue here, so it doesn't have to be overwhelmingly pretty and it's better to be safe than sorry. We'll clean it up a little when it's cooled down and fixed. Meanwhile we can give some love to our floppy drive. We clean the read and write heads and the motor drive shaft with some isopropanol and lubricate the drive shaft with some oil or thin grease. Here's the new switch after cleaning it up a bit. As we've said, the right protection hole of the floppy disk will align with the front pin of our switch. The rear pin will detect disk presence. Well, this looks good so far. Now we can rewire it. Prepare three pieces of wire. Not too long, not too short. Again, we have a bit of room here. There is no need for hair splitting precision. If in doubt, just add a few extra millimeters. We use our multimeter to check which of the switch's soldering pads belongs to which switching pin. In this case, the green wire will signal the disc's write protection status and the blue wire will signal disc presence. The black wire is our ground, connected to the center soldering pad of the switch. Also, we check our wire routing. The switching pins are super sensitive, make sure they can move freely and if you don't want to use extra insulation, make sure the soldering pads have enough space around them. Ok, this is what it looks like with the wire soldered to the switch. And here's the bottom side. We solder the right protection wire to soldering pad number 2 on the floppy circuit board, the disk presence wire to pad number 1 and very much like on the switch, the center pad, number 3, is the ground line. This of course only applies to the drive we are using. Other Amiga floppy drives may have a different layout here. Well, that wasn't too hard. So we reassemble our floppy drive. 
put the black plastic thing back into place, making sure it sits under the upper reed right head mechanism. Then we push it back into its slots. Again, this may require a little bit of force at the two front metal guides. Hmm, see, one of the metal rings or caps got a bit out of place. Otherwise, the black part should slip in easily. Next, we put the floppy drive's top casing back in place. It should easily snap in at the front and we remount the two screws at the back. One last shot for the audience and it's done. Let's put a floppy disk into the drive and see how it looks. Very good. The rear pin gets pushed down nicely by the floppy and the front pin sits almost perfectly centered in the right protection hole. Time for testing. We put our floppy drive into one of our Amigas. Here we are using an Amiga 600 and play a little bit with the floppy disk's right protection switch. Mm, yeah, this looks good. Okie dokie, this works. Oh, and what do we do with our PC drive? Is this going to the waste container? Not at all. It should still be usable as an HD only floppy drive, but maybe we can do even better. Let's see if we can turn this into an Amiga floppy drive in another episode of Amiga Alive. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again.